morning. We're getting closer to a time when we can begin to reopen our church buildings. We hope. Until then, we continue to be the Church of Jesus Christ here in Killermint. We're learning how to worship God in different ways. So wherever you are, and whenever you are watching, welcome to Killermint Parish Church. Let us pray together. Lord God, we believe you when you tell us that you want to be close to us. You want to live in us and walk among us, for we are your people. We confess that we keep you away and we keep you out of our lives. We put up barriers and we build walls. We say that we want to be your people, but in fact, we want to be our own men and women. And when we do that, we get into all kinds of trouble, cause ourselves pain and hurt those we love. We harm others without thinking too much about it and dishonour you. Forgive us, Lord God. We know that if we are to be your people, we must follow your son, Jesus. Jesus died for us. He took all that we did so terribly wrong upon himself. So we can now live. We want to live, Lord God. We want to live close to you. Holy Spirit, make it clear to us what is good and what is bad. Warn us loudly and clearly when we are stepping into danger and clean us up when we make a real mess of things. Show us how to fear God so we can live with joy and hope and with love and forgiveness. And now, Lord God, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our first song asks God to come into our hearts and minds, into the core of our lives. Celtic worship are a group of Scottish folk musicians, and they are given Be Thou My Vision, a distinctly Scottish resonance. So let them take you deeper into worship as you listen to the familiar words of Be Thou My Vision. Our reading this morning is from Paul's second letter to the church in Corinth. When you first hear this passage, you might think that Paul is telling Christians to cut themselves off from other people. But that's not what Paul is saying. Alan will say a bit more, but for now, let us listen as God, through Paul, speaks to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to chapter 7, verse 4. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among believers, come out from, un, from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you. And I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Because we have these promises, dear friends, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that can defile our body or spirit. And let us work towards complete holiness, because we fear God. Please open your hearts to us. We have not done wrong to anyone, nor led anyone astray nor taken advantage of anyone. I am not saying this to condemn you. I said before that you are in our hearts and we live or die together with you. I have the highest confidence in you and I take great pride in you. 
You have greatly encouraged me and made me happy despite all our troubles. Amen. We thank God for speaking to us this morning and we ask the Holy Spirit to help us understand. Our next song is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. This Charles Wesley hymn is a favourite of many. We have, chosen this, we have chosen this this morning because the words echo what Paul was telling the Corinthians. When we follow Jesus, our lives will be changed. And whether we like the idea of being holy or not, that's what it's all about. Thank you, Nicola, for opening our service and leading us in prayer. And also to Ailey for our reading from 2 Corinthians. And as Ailey said, Paul is not saying what we might think on a first hearing. The easiest way to explain is to show you this. Christian, have you ever asked God for forgiveness? That's a tough question. I never in terms of, I have, I'm, I'm a religious person. Shockingly, because people are so shocked when they find this out. Uh, I'm Protestant, I'm Presbyterian, and I go to church and I love God and I love my church. And Norman Vincent Peale, the great Norman Vincent Peale was my pastor. The power of positive thinking, everything which is a big But have you ever asked God for forgiveness? <laughs> I'm not sure I have. I just go on to try and do a better job from there. I don't think so. I think I, if, I, if I do something wrong, I think I just try and make it right. I don't bring God into that picture. I don't. Now, when I take, you know, when we go to church and, and when I drink other wine, which is about the only wine I drink, and have my little cracker, I guess that's a form of asking for forgiveness. And I do that as often as possible because I feel cleansed, okay? But, uh, you know, to me, that's important. I do that. But in terms of officially, I should, I'd say, I could say absolutely, and everybody, I don't think in terms of that. I, I think in terms of let's go on and let's make it right. So, what did you hear? A rich and powerful man admitting that he makes mistakes and that he tries to put them right? Or a rich and powerful man who calls himself a Christian, explaining that he does not ask for God's forgiveness because he has the power to fix everything by himself? The most depressing thing about that clip is that Donald Trump was applauded by a purportedly, well, a self-identifying Christian audience. Applauded for explaining, in effect, that he does not need God's forgiveness because he, Donald Trump, can make things right. And that, my friends, is what it looks like when a human being decides that they are God and that God is not. Apparently, Jesus Christ did not need to die upon the cross for Donald. It's not pretty, is it? As Paul warned, it is spiritually spiritually corrupt and spiritually corrupting. It's a way of thinking that if allowed in risks spreading throughout the whole body of Christ the church. So Paul warns don't let it in because it's a dangerous virus called idolatry. Now we know that the American church is deeply conflicted about Donald Trump. And not just about him, but about its relationships with politicians from all sides. Yet there is a rich and powerful strand within conservative Christianity in the States, which has adopted Donald Trump as one of their own. 
They want to use his presidency as a vehicle for their own ideology. And the price that they're apparently willing to pay is to allow in to their churches the corruption of the gospel. They've allowed lies into their churches and it has corrupted their witness to the very people who need to hear them speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about Jesus. But before I, or we, get too self-righteous about this, what's happening in the US is neither new nor unique. There has been, there is, something beguiling about wealth and power. Often it just seems easier to fall in with the latest ideas being espoused by the biggest mouths. And there is the temptation not to look or to listen too closely if we think we're getting what we want from someone who's in a position to give it to us. We're eager to have the ear of influential people and we crave the endorsement or even just the lukewarm non-opposition of famous names. Paul, in his time, had already written to the Corinthian Christians about just this. His first surviving letter lists a good number of specific cases where they got it horribly wrong because they wanted to stay on the right side of their culture. So they'd taken part in pagan rituals which were abhorrent to God and therefore deeply damaging to themselves. And they'd let slide behavior that was dangerously unhealthy. Basically, like Donald Trump and those who applaud his willingness, sorry, his unwillingness to approach God for forgiveness, the Corinthians had lost sight of what sin really is. It takes all forms, greed and pride and hate and fear and violence, uncaring cruelty, the list is infinitely varied. But all flow from the belief that we are our own gods and that God is not. Jesus, thanks for dying, but at least for me, it really wasn't necessary. You needn't have bothered. Because I've forgiven myself and you don't need to. But let's be clear. Paul is not instructing the Corinthian Christians to cut themselves off from the rest of the city or to confine themselves in a safe religious bubble. There's nothing isolationist in what he's saying. Paul himself lived in the thick of the rough and tumble of the Roman Greek world of the Eastern Mediterranean. He traveled indiscriminately and he met thousands and thousands of people who, to begin with, knew nothing of Jesus. He was motivated to get out there and into the lives of non-Christians. Of necessity, that meant listening and speaking, eating and celebrating, mourning and struggling alongside the very people he wanted to persuade of the beautiful truth of the gospel. And he also lived well among them, not in condemnation, but in grace and love. There were no no-go areas for this most effective of evangelists and his team. Instead, in this passage, Paul is focusing on what's going on inside the church. His concern is that the Corinthian Christians are finding it all too easy to rewrite the story of Jesus to make life comfortable for themselves. They are remolding Jesus so that he fits neatly into what they're already doing. They're recasting the faith which Paul brought to them to avoid any risk of unpleasantness with the aggressively pagan world of Corinth. They are far too ready to compromise, to drop key elements of their faith, and to fall in with the lax morals and predatory ethics of their time. 
in order to cling on to their old lives, they're letting go of Jesus. They've dropped holiness in favour of convenience. Yet it's really important for us to notice that Paul is speaking from his heart, which is brimming with love, affection, concern for the Christian people of Corinth. It's that care and concern which drives him to speak bluntly and boldly about the damage that they're doing to themselves and to their relationship with God. Paul assures them, I'm not saying this to condemn you. I've said before that you're in our hearts and we live or die together with you. In that video clip we watched just a few moments ago, you heard President Trump mention the name Norman Vincent Peale. Now I edited out the middle section um, for the sake of time, the middle section in which the president waxed lyrical about the late great Norman Vincent Peale. And he did that, of course, it's fairly transparent, in an effort to avoid answering the question put to him. As a Christian, have you ever asked God for forgiveness? And in fact, Donald was even more effuse about Norman Vincent Peale than about God. Now, most of you will know that Peale is famous for his 1952 book, The Power of Positive Thinking, which greatly influenced both the secular self-help movement and the rise of the prosperity gospel, which has so discredited the cause of Christ. One uh, contemporary theologian, Reinhold Niebuhr, critiqued Peel's book as a partial picture of Christianity, a sort of half-truth. He said it encouraged egocentricity, self-obsession. In Niebuhr's words, It puts self instead of the cross of Jesus Christ at the centre of the picture. And of course the great irony is that Peel was the minister of a fashionable church in New York frequented by the Trump family. I could go on, but I won't. Now sadly Donald Trump is not the only president to think well of Norman Vincent Peel's ideology. Peel seems to have an undue influence in the White House over a number of presidencies. However, one famous American politician took a rather different view. Presidential contender Adlai Stevenson once remarked that, speaking as a Christian, I find the Apostle Paul appealing and the Apostle Peel appalling. I think that's a useful little saying for us today. The Apostle Paul appealed to the Corinthian Christians to keep Jesus, the crucified and risen Christ, at the centre of their lives, driving, directing, determining all that they said and did in gratitude that the Son of God was prepared to die for them. So that they could ask for forgiveness of their sins and know that they had life then and now fully and completely to live for Christ as they would in time live with Christ. They were all about the Jesus of the Gospels and no one else, however powerful, however wealthy, however convenient. And Paul is making that same appeal to us today. And anything else is just, well, appalling? Amen. And to God alone be the glory. And now we're going to visit Lisa and Grant, Callum and Lorne, to hear just how they're getting on. (laughs) Well, good afternoon. I see 
two boys I barely recognize. Who's who? Who wants to tell me who is who? I'm Callum and this is Lauren. This is Lauren. And is Lauren your big brother? No. He's my younger brother. He's your younger <laughs> brother. You're... I think he's almost going to fall out. I, what, what did you say, Lauren? I, I missed that. My tooth is about to fall out. Oh, your tooth is about Can you show us which tooth? All right. Is that is that the first tooth you've ever had fall out, or have you had others? I didn't know that yet. It's my first tooth. It's your first tooth. Well, this is a very special moment. Very special moment. Is it sore? No. No. Well, that's good. That's well, good. When I pull my teeth, it's sore. When you when you pull it, it's sore. No way. Oh, you brush your teeth, it's sore. Sorry, yeah. Well, I imagine that it would be, but this is this is a very auspicious moment, and for us to be able to uh, to uh, uh, witness it is very special indeed. But I suspect that your big brother Callum has yeah. had many teeth fall out before. Yeah. Have, you, have you got any gaps in your teeth at the moment, Callum? I lost some of my teeth. Some of them are here, but they're actually kind of small. Kind of small, well. And my top teeth have grown the most. Have they? Well, the, the little, the small teeth get pushed out so the big teeth can come in. Is that right? So you got to look after these teeth because you ain't getting any others after this one. Interesting. Yeah? You know, once my mommy... Once Lisa yanked my tooth out. Really? Well, we'll just phone social services right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you were nervous, Lisa, isn't it? Very much so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself, Lisa? So I am Callum and Lauren's mummy, Lisa. Well, I'm called yeah. Callum. <laughs> no, I can't believe it. This is yeah. And who, who's, who else is in the picture, uh, Lord? Who else is here? Who's that? Callum will tell me. Who's that next to you, Callum? Dad. Dad. And Dad's name is? Grant. Grant. Well done. Excellent. So, Grant, I think uh, you and Lisa have been working at home. Uh, and Lisa, you've been uh, working at home, caring for everyone, and sorting out the homeschooling too. Trying to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every day is so different from the next. One day is yeah. different from the next. So. Yeah. You, it, it hasn't inspired you to become a teacher then? Oh, no. Actually, I think I have a lot more respect for teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I will never complain again. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. But you don't need to worry about any homeschooling now because yeah. the holidays have started officially. Yes. Yeah. Is, are things different, Callum, now that you're on holiday? Uh, no, not exactly, <laughs> but a little bit of a yes. A little bit of a yes. Just a 0.1% extra. Uh huh. Is that extra good or extra bad? Uh, I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> okay. So what have you got planned anyway for your holidays? I know it's it's. We're only now starting to think about being able to to go uh, any distance. But have you anything you'd like to do in the holidays, Callum? Put up our tent. Put up in tent. our garden. Yeah. And who's going to sleep in the tent? I am. You and are. Daddy and Mummy and Lauren. Right. You are your family, especially Willow, if she is used to it. Used to it. And who's who's Willow? Uh, the, our dog. Your dog, Willow. And is Willow a, a well-behaved dog? No. Yes and no. Yes, <laughs> because she plays with us and actually makes us feel a lot better. Yeah. But no, because... Well, <laughs> people, mommy, 
when we are walking. Let's be really up, careful here, she, Cal. She eats our socks. She eaten my toys two times or a fortnight. Uh, is that because is that is that because you don't feed Willow? She has to eat your socks uh, and your toys. She always feed her. I sometimes do it when mommy tells me. Uh huh. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I know. Wow, there you go. And one of the funny things about her, uh huh, cannot allow any other wild animals around the house I she's know. like well she's just guarding well that's I great a funny doggy she's a funny and doggy she, turn, she, turn, she turns like this and we rub her tummy the lot <laughs> do you like you're getting do you like your tummy getting rubbed lord no no <laughs> oh i think <laughs> you do he loves his background. Uh, yeah, well, that's okay. Yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds good. So, Lisa, you've been working. How's uh, from home? How's that been going? Have you? Um, no, it's not been too bad actually. Um, yes, yeah, trying to balance work and kids is a bit of a challenge. But you know, I I, I like working from home because you don't have to deal with the, being getting in the car, having to leave your home. I mean. You can work it from in your pajamas if you can, you know, uh, or if you want. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's not too bad actually. I think I accomplish more at home than if I would yeah. be in the office. And you know, the boys are happy having both parents home, and yeah. it's it's a bit noisy. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> the house is a bit noisy, um, um, but well, it's actually kind of a lot extra noisy for me. Because sometimes I love that house for wearing his own. Because one person <laughs> sometimes annoys me. One person's noisy. <laughs> Who would that be? Oh, I can see. Yeah, yeah. So, Lisa, you've got all your uh, family are in the Caribbean. Yeah. Yes. So you've been able to keep in touch with them. Yes, thank goodness for technology. So, yeah, they're they're in hot Trinidad. <laughs> uh huh. Good old Trinidad. Good old Trinidad. Um, they're keeping safe. Um, thank heavens, but you know, I, obviously I miss them. I was supposed to be in Trinidad, um, going to visit them, but of course, due to the yeah. circumstances, it's just not possible. And but um, but yeah, no, I, I do miss it. I do miss it at home because I haven't been home now for over two years. So it's yeah, that's I'm a long very time. Close to the family. Yeah, 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 good. Well, you've had a good spell of wonderful weather here for the last few few months. Yes, I'm not complaining. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But Grant, uh, tell, you've been working from home. Um, tell yeah. us, what are your favourite pyjamas for working from home in? Oh, hey, favourite pyjamas. <laughs> uh, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been, you've been uh, obviously out of the office for... A few months now, and how's 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 that going? Um, fine, I think actually, I much prefer to uh, to to work from home. Yeah, it's quite um, well, it's quite different. But uh, and, but as Lisa said, often often you find that you get more done without the, the kind of normal office distractions. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a plus. Yeah, so yeah, quite quite enjoy it to be honest. <laughs> Good, yeah, yeah. Well, things are obviously moving a bit faster towards uh, releasing us, but um, there have been some good things about this, particularly if you've had obviously family close, you know, in, you know, with you and um, and, and a wonderful dog Willow as well, by the sound of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> And how's your mum doing? She lives fairly close by. You've been able to keep in touch yes. with her. Yeah. She, she's fine. She's, uh, she's been um, avoiding uh, really any kind of contact for quite a while. Sure. She, wasn't, she wasn't shielding as such, but um, we, we had to really just uh, uh, play it safe with her uh, during that time. So she's quite a lot happier now that we're actually able to go down yeah. uh, and see her. Um, I imagine. So, yeah, so things are looking up a bit there. Good, good. Yeah. 
yeah, it's been a strange and and challenging time. But it sounds as if you guys have, you know, in these difficult circumstances, made the absolute best of it. So so well well done. And uh, uh, I suspect um, never a dull moment. Never. <laughs> now you've got a prayer for us. Um, you you've got a prayer to uh, lead us. Uh, so whenever you're ready. Sure. Okay. Father God, there are lots of good things happening in this world. We thank you for people who are determined to bring fairness, honesty and kindness to everyone. We thank, thank you that we live in a place where we feel safe, know that we will be cared for when we need help and where we can flourish whatever our age. Show us, we ask, how we and our church can be part of all the good things that are going on. Lord Jesus, you came because we needed to be rescued, and we still do. There is evil in our world because we have pushed you out. We pray against hate and grief. We pray for our children whose lives are filled with fear and pain, for older people who feel discarded and vulnerable, for all of us who are seeing a loss of darkness and very little light. Holy Spirit, may we be part of the answers to our own prayers. Give us courage to love beyond ourselves. Show us what it means to be really secure and confident because our trust is in Jesus. We ask for your wisdom for our leaders as they make very difficult decisions. Fill us with joyful patience and care for others so that we all do what is right to help protect everyone. Be with our children throughout this strange holiday time. And may the next weeks be good ones for our community when we discover new ways of being the best neighbors to one another that we can be. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Wow, well done. Some great reading going on there. And you weren't bad either, Grant and Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I tell you, it's been so good to see you. Um, it feels like such a long time, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, I think this, we're <laughs> moving towards a time when we can start to get back together again. Um, I hope you guys have a really good uh, summer. Um, are, are you planning to try and get away anywhere? Not sure yet. To be honest, it's, uh, no, things are just starting to yeah. to publicize that they're opening up at all. So we'll yeah. see. No, it'd be nice to get out on some nice days just for love. Yeah, even, even just going for a few day trips would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, Scotland's still a, a tourist attraction for me. Yes. So there's a lot about Scotland. I, I mean, there's no no need to leave the country, really. I mean, it's, it's such a beautiful country and so much to discover. <laughs> you say all the right things, Lisa. Are, are you on commission from the tourist board? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, thank you so much. Um, thank you. And uh, I hope we'll see you maybe even in the park walking Willow before too long. Okay. Okay, Lauren and Callum. Goodbye. See you later. Bye. 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 Well, thank you, Lisa, Grant, Callum, and Lauren. It was so good to speak to you. I had so much fun, and I loved your prayer and the way that you all shared in it. And it was great to hear how you are flourishing under the lockdown. I hope you have a great summer together. Our final song this morning is... A really powerful song about what it means to have Jesus as number one in our lives. It's a song called Nobody and it's by Casting Crowns. And now may the grace of God be upon us all, upon all whom we love, upon our nation and may we speak of that grace 
without fear or favor. Amen.